Do you want a trimaran? Hmm, maybe you don't. Maybe you do. Let's find out. Three hulls are better than one. That would be the adage of the trimaran. This hull form consists of one central hull with two smaller side hulls called amas. Now, the average person conceives of the trimaran as something even more extreme than catamarans, that they're lighter weight, that they're higher speed, more specialized. The opposite is actually true. Trimarans fill in excellent transition role between monohulls and catamarans. Now recognize that potential and you're going to comprehend the strengths and weaknesses of the trimaran hull form. What makes a trimaran? What makes them so special? Well, when you think about trimarans, I want you to envision stability. That's the key word. A conventional monohull has to balance conflicting needs of resistance and stability. You want skinny hulls, but you want to maintain stability, which requires wider hulls. Now, the trimaran separates these two design requirements. Now, in a trimaran, the central hull provides most of the buoyancy, around 90 to 95%, whereas the outer amas are just barely in the water, providing mainly just stability. You see that most of the underwater area is the central hull, and the outer amas just barely touch the water. What are the advantages of a trimaran? Most people think of their common application is that they are great for high speed because you have these very slender hulls. But I want you to think also about their secondary advantage, that they are a moderate crossbreed between the catamaran and the monohull. You have a moderate amount of weight capacity in them. They can still carry decent amounts of dead weight you still have a larger cross deck area to work with, and that also still gives you moderate amounts of space below deck, mostly concentrated in your center hull. So you're getting some pros from both a mono hull and a catamaran. It gives you a lot of flexibility to handle that transition zone in terms of design requirements. The other advantages of this is that the long length of the center hull offers some great advantages for sea keeping. See, the length greatly reduces pitch motions and waves, and that narrow center hull reduces chances of the bow slamming into the waves. It'll just cut straight through them because it's so narrow. To improve things even more, the side amas are wonderful at reducing roll motions. So on the whole, Trimaran has a lot to offer for sea keeping capability. Another advantage is the design of the cross deck between the main hull and the amas. You see, on a catamaran, this cross deck bridges a large empty gap. Large gaps add complexity to engineering when we start talking about structure. They require stronger structures, more steel, more calculations. We don't really like that. But the trimaran's cross deck is much smaller of a gap. It requires less of a distance between the center hull and the side amas. And the cross deck does not extend for the entire length of the ship. This is important. You see, longitudinal bending is less of a concern for the cross deck because it's over a shorter distance. That greatly simplifies the design and gives us many different advantages. See, heavier loads can be carried on the cross deck now. We require less structural weight to actually design the cross deck. And the dead weight coefficient for the entire vessel gets closer to what you would expect for a monohull. Again, we're taking some of those advantages of being able to carry heavy weights. Problem solved. This is one of my favorite features of the trimaran. There is a bit of a conundrum when it comes to stability and catamarans. You see, in catamarans, you lose stability once a single ama completely leaves the water. Push a catamaran past that point, and stability is a losing battle a fact that scares many vessel operators, and I can understand why. Trimarans do not have that problem. They get stability mainly from submerging the amas, rather than pulling the windward ama out. See, the center hull is pretty much always going to stay in the water because it's near the point of rotation. 
and the leeward hull continues to submerge further and further into the water. This does a wonderful thing. It creates a predictable increase in writing moment. In normal cases, the trimaran never experiences that sudden reduction in stability. That doesn't mean the trimaran is perfect. One design challenge that both the catamaran and the trimaran share is limited stability angles. See, by design, neither catamarans or trimarans will heal over much. Now, a good naval architect has to account for that as one of his design challenges. That's not to say the trimarans get off with no detractors whatsoever. Myself, I think one of the biggest disadvantages of the trimaran is the lack of experience. There are very few trimarans in military applications, and even less in commercial use. That lack of experience instills some wariness in many operators. I appreciate that caution, but don't let that stop you from realizing the benefits of a trimaran and asking if it's right for you. Aside from the lack of experience, there are a few genuine detractors. So due to their complexity, they require some extra design effort. The cross deck introduces a few extra ways to twist and bend the ship, and engineers must check these extra scenarios. Finite element analysis, FEA, is the tool to do this. Now, don't worry much about the FEA bill, though. It's not going to change that much from a typical monohull. Cost definitely factors into trimaran construction. See, the cross deck and the extra amas do add extra steel to the design. You have to pay for that extra steel. But don't assume that this drastically increases the total build cost. Look at the comparison between adding extra machinery and extra structure. Turns out that the cost to add extra machinery is around two times more expensive than the cost of extra structure. Why do I mention this comparison between structure and machinery? That's because if you're not using a trimaran and you go back to a monohull, you're going to need a wider monohull to match the same capabilities. That means extra power, extra machinery, extra cost. So when you're looking at the costs of building a trimaran, compare that to the equivalent monohull design. So you think trimarans are nifty, and now you wonder where can we use them? I'm glad you asked. One of the things I want to dispel here is this idea that trimarans are only small, lightweight vessels. One of the first experimental military trimarans was the Triton, a steel vessel with a displacement that exceeded 1,000 metric tons. These are not little vessels. Acker Arctic has even investigated using trimarans as an ice-breaking tug. Think about that. Acker found that the trimaran configuration was especially useful for cutting wide channels through the ice with using less power. So don't think of trimarans as an expensive hull form. The prevalence of trimarans with expensive ships is mostly a coincidence. Trimarans are just a hull configuration. How you use the hull is up to you. And that's the moral of the story. Don't let the previous trimarans limit your imagination. The trimaran hull form is a hybrid. It bridges the gap between monohulls and catamarans. It offers some advantages of both, including deadweight capability and larger deck area. And primarily though, trimarans deliver ship stability in a very power efficient package. Those are all wonderful words to think of when you're designing a ship. So what uses can you imagine with that flexibility? Write your answers in the comments below. Thanks very much. I'm Nick, the Naval Architect. Active heave compensation. Stability tests done from start to finish. Four ways to break your structure. Statistics and sea keeping. These are just some of the videos that I have planned for the future. If you want to see more amazing videos about ships, then click that like button or subscribe if you're new to the channel. I'll see you next time for more awesome insights about boats.